Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, this is Samuel Yan Chi Chen from the Wells Fargo Bank. Today I will uh, present the uh, introduction to the quantum reinforcement learning. And uh, this is the topics that I will cover. I will cover the quantum deep Q learning, policy gradient method, and advanced uh, quantum IL model with evolutionary algorithm, uh, recurrent neural network, and a quantum architecture search. So um, in a quantum machine learning, we have different categories depending on their uh, L type of algorithm and the type of data that the algorithm is processing. And uh, in this talk, I will focus on the CQ part. So the environment, the IR environment is uh, classical and we, we are going to develop quantum algorithm to process this uh, environment. So uh, in the recent years, there are several works in the quantum reinforcement from the, uh, the original form of quantum deep Q learning and then more advanced forms such as the policy gradient and the multi-agent quantum reinforcement learning. So uh, the basic building blocks of the uh, uh, quantum neural network or the existing quantum machine learning are the variation of quantum circuits. So they are basically the learnable or trainable quantum circuit. So here you have the U of X, which will in encode your input data from the environment, say the state or the observation. And the V, uh, v of theta uh, is the, um, the variational block. So this is actually the learning part. And you can see that these uh, uh, theta are very similar to the weight and the bias in the classical neural network. And finally, we measure the information from the quantum circuit so that we can use that information to make decisions. So um, the general form of uh, VQC is that you, you need to choose some observables, you, you, how to project the quantum information and get the uh, classical data. So you, if you have n qubits, then you can measure uh, each of the qubit to get the observable and pr for example if you measure all the n qubits then you can have uh, n, n values. So you can use these n expectation values so these are classical uh, values or uh, floating numbers and you can use these floating point numbers to uh, say treating them as the probability or uh, the, the values of uh, particular actions in the reinforcement learning. And uh, there are ways to calculate the gradient of this kind of quantum function by the parameter shift rule. So we are not going to cover how to calculate the gradient here, but uh, once you know how to calculate the gradient, you can combine the quantum neural network and the classical neural network to build very powerful models. So um, the quantum reinforcement is using quantum circuit to replace part of the, or all of the classical neural network. And then you use traditional uh, reinforcement algorithms such as the Q learning, policy gradient, or the uh, advantage actor critic, et cetera, et cetera, to uh, learn the quantum circuit parameters. So the framework is very similar to the existing classical RL. The first is the deep Q learning. So in the Q learning, we have a Q function. The Q function is the, uh, the, the value function of state uh, S and the action uh, A. And uh, we want to uh, learn the, the Q function. So that given a, a state, we can know that which action will give the uh, highest values. And traditionally, we use some uh, two-dimensional array to learn the Q value, but if you have a large uh, uh, observation uh, space or action space, then this is not feasible. So later on, people develop deep Q learning using neural network to approximate the Q function, but it is not that stable. So um, several years ago, people developed uh, experience replay and the target network to stabilize the training of deep Q learning. And then we can further extend the idea of classical deep Q learning to the quantum deep Q learning by replacing the classical neural network with the quantum neural network or the variational quantum circuits. So we can still you, uh, consider the target network. So we have different set of circuit parameters and then 
uh, we follow the uh, the deep Q learning algorithm, but this time we are not training the classical neural network. Instead, we are training the uh, the quantum circuits, and uh, we can use different kind of optimization method. For example, using the finite difference method to calculate the gradients or the parameter shift rule uh, to uh, calculate the gradient, and we can uh, train the uh, the quantum circuits. Uh, to uh, learn how to navigate in this uh, simple um, uh, navigation task. So this is called the frozen lake uh, in the OpenAI gene. And we can see that uh, with some clever design of the encoding, uh, the model can learn uh, how to make uh, the decisions. So this is the original form of the quantum uh, deep learning several years ago. And later on, other groups developed the, the version of quantum policy gradient. So the policy gradient means that you directly learn the policy function, a prob probability distribution of the action A given the state S. So uh, the classical algorithm called reinforce uh, means that you can um, calculate the gradient of the expected total return using uh, this equation. And um, to make the training more stable, you can have a learnable baseline uh, subtracted from the um, uh, total return. So this will stabilize the training and you will uh, have a uh, better estimate of how good or how bad a particular uh, action under a uh, particular state. So uh, another group uh, developed this uh, parameterized quantum policies for reinforcement learning. So this is uh, basically replace the policy function pi with the quantum neural network and they use a particular kind of encoding method called data re-uploading. It means that you uh, uh, upload or you encode your data into the quantum circuit several times. So you can use a uh, circuit which is uh, with not that many qubits but is much more uh, much deeper and uh, they show, numerically show that the traditional policy gradient algorithms that just reinforce can train these policy, uh, these uh, quantum neural network to solve certain kind of uh, control problems such as the carpool, mountain car, and the aqua boat. And later on, um, uh, we can further uh, extend the original policy gradient method to the asynchronous form. So we can have, say, multiple concurrent actors. So imagine that you have multiple quantum processing units, and then you put uh, all these um, agents, and then they will uh, experience the, uh, the environment, and then they calculate their uh, gradient, and they only share the gradient of the parameter. And then in the uh, global storage, they will, um, the global uh, server will aggregate those uh, gradients and share across all the participants. So you can use multi-core CPU for stimulation to accelerate the training. And uh, we can show that in this kind of um, uh, model, uh, the quantum um, model can be the classical model when uh, both of the quantum and the classical model sites are very similar. So you cannot expect that a quantum model with 100 parameters will beat a classical model with say uh, 1 million or uh, uh, 1 billion parameters. So this is something that we need to uh, remember when we compare the classical and the quantum models. But some of the uh, uh, qu uh, gradient based method uh, will uh, not be successful in uh, the some of the environments and um, an alternative is to use the evolutionary or the uh, gradient-free method to optimize the quantum circuit. So the idea is quite simple. So we initialize a, a population of agents uh, randomly, and then in each uh, round, we run all the agents and we calculate their fitness, how good or how bad their performance. And then we select the best of the population and we use the best parameters to generate the next generation of agents. And we can show that uh, this method can train model to succeed in uh, many uh, different environments. But 
some of the um, uh, environment are quite difficult, require the agent to remember the past information. So we can further using the uh, recurrent neural network to train uh, the reinforcement agent. So the idea is that we replacing the classical LSTM, those uh, W, those classical neural networks by the quantum circuit. So we use the quantum circuit to replace these classical neural network. And uh, previously studies show that the quantum LSTM can show better performance. And then we can further use uh, uh, this kind of quantum LSTM, which succeed in the time series modeling in the partially observable quantum reinforcement environment. So if we control the number of quantum LSTN and the classical LSTN, we can see that the quantum version of the uh, LSTN or the recurrent reinforcement agent can learn better um, decision making um, on the uh, couple environment. So we mask some of the uh, observations in the couple environment. And this requires um, the agent to remember the past observations. But training recurrent neural network is usually very difficult. So it's the, it, a, a way that we can use recurrence, but without doing the back propagation through time. In the classical machine learning, there is a method called the rest of our computing means that we uh, randomly initialize a system such as the recurrent neural network and we only uh, train the last linear layer. So again, we use the quantum LTM, but this time we randomly initialize all those quantum neural networks and then we don't train them at all. And we can show that they can, uh, in the same uh, similar benchmarks, uh, they can reach quite a, com a comparable performance to the fully trained quantum LSTM. But of course, since uh, this is not trained at all, so uh, probably they may not reach the best performance, but this is quite similar. At least you don't need to do the back propagation through time. And later on, we develop another kind of uh, quantum IR called the fast wave programming. So in the classical uh, uh, machine learning, the fast wave programmer means that you use a slow programmer, a not a classical neural network to generate the weight change or the weight update of another uh, classical neural network. So only the slow programmer is trained by the gradient descent and it will faster program another neural network. The program here means the weight of the neural network. So in the quantum fast weight programmer, we use a classical neural network to generate the updates of the variational quantum circuit. So we can use the classical neural network to, uh, to modify or to reprogram the, the uh, variational quantum circuits. So since we only uh, update, we, we are not going to uh, rewrite it from scratch. So uh, this model can retain the uh, temporal information without using the recurrent neural network. So this is the detailed uh, architecture of the uh, circuit. And uh, we can use this model as a reinforcement agent. And uh, we can show that uh, compared to the quantum LSTM baseline with similar number of parameters, the, this kind of fast wave programmers can uh, outperform all those quantum recurrent neural network based models without using those back propagation through time. So the training is much more faster. And uh, finally, uh, I will cover the uh, quantum reinforcement with quantum architecture search. So uh, given a uh, quantum reinforcement problem, probably we need to design a variational quantum circuit like this, how to encode the circuit, how to design the learnable part. And there are different choice and uh, which is the best. So if so uh, why not, uh, why choose? Why not uh, have all the options and select the best route? So this is the idea of the differentiable quantum architecture search. We select, we can have all the answers and we give them the weight W1 to Wn. We have the uh, ensemble function, which is just the weighted sum of all the outputs. And then we use the weighted outputs and then we 
put the weighted output into the loss function and then we do the gradient as we do the ordinary uh, gradient descent updates. So for example, we can consider this kind of circuits. We have different uh, choice of ansatz and then uh, we can also combine uh, multiple blocks into the sequence and then we use uh, this uh, the whole uh, differentiable quantum architecture search block in a reinforced milling agent and we train the uh, whole system including the circuit uh, or the quantum circuit or the variational quantum circuit parameters and the structural weight W1 to Wn simultaneously and uh, we can of, or, uh, also include the uh, uh, asynchronous training method using multiple servers. So we can show that uh, the uh, differentiable quantum architecture search method can outperform uh, the manually craft ansatz. And the differentiable quantum architecture search method, uh, its performance is very uh, stable among different uh, benchmarks and the baselines. So I will not uh, talk about all the details here, but uh, uh, the take home message is that this kind of method is quite uh, general and can be used to solve uh, a variety of tasks. Okay, and uh, okay, so the conclusion, so uh, in the quantum reinforcement, we use the variational quantum circuit to approximate the value function, the uh, policy function and we can further use the quantum recurrent neural network to learn uh, in the partially observable environment and we can use quantum fast wave programmer use a separate network to program um, and finally we use the differentiable quantum architecture search to uh, relax the restriction of designing the uh, quantum circuits manually and future investigations are required to, the, to study the trainability and the scalability of those quantum reinforcement models. Thank you for your listening.